California. So, Jayla, this is a great week to be in Florida. We have had so much snow this week, it's crazy. If you love snow, you kind of missed it, but, you know, probably I would have rather been with the sun and the beach and all that kind of stuff, so I hope you had a good week. And I wanted to show you a couple of things in your books where we could start moving ahead, hopefully you'll review. Oh, there's Ranger saying hello too. There he is. Um, hopefully before you went on vacation, you got pretty comfortable with the pieces that we were doing before. These are, if you can try to get to them before your lesson, it's great. If you can't, these videos will stay on here for a while so you'll be able to access them. So in your lesson book, I wanted to, well, both of the first for this first video because there will be a couple of short videos and they'll be numbered so hopefully you're watching this one and I've numbered it one. First thing I wanted to do was talk a little bit remember we're playing in a new key the key of G where we have an F sharp in the key signature and both of these pieces that I want to do in this first video have some syncopation to them some rhythm that might be a little bit tricky the Duke of York is just a traditional folk song, but what they've done is, in fact, they did they changed it from the first edition. They didn't have it all jazzy like this, and then they've jazzed it up. So it's kind of fun, um, and I don't think you're going to have trouble with the syncopation in it. Sometimes I will go back to the first edition and give students this song just straight through without the ties and things. But you'll notice if... Um, in fact, it would be good if you, I don't remember if we've ever done one of these video lessons before, but have your book open so that when I talk about things like if I take you to a measure or I show you something, then you can just refer to it in your own music, you can mark it, you can assign it, you know, like I do with the check mark, with the date, that kind of thing. So I'm looking at the Duke of York strut, which is in your lesson book, it's page 54. and. I wanted to show you a couple of these measures um, where you get the syncopated rhythm. Now the left hand rhythm is like a pattern, so it's going to be the same. So if I start in measure five, you're going to have your basic chords, and this would be a good opportunity for you to review how to label them. So just take a pencil. You'll see that in this book I have labeled them. For whoever I think this is a used book from somebody I don't know if you can see that well but I've underneath with the pencil I've just done either a one or a four or five seven because part of what I want you being able to do is to recognize the chords both in their root position like the stacked up and in the broken position which is going to be an, another video after this I want to show you something with that with the next song the canoeing song so notice that measure five and you know what? One benefit of these YouTube videos, again, I don't remember that you've ever done one, so that's why I'm giving you a little bit of tutorial with it. You can always push pause, go get your stuff, come back. You can rewind. Um, so if you miss something, we can go back and do it again. Oftentimes I use these opportunities to do ear training with you, which we don't always get to in your lesson. And so you can always play them over again if you don't get them the first couple of times. So one benefit of doing the little videos when you've missed a lesson. Anyway, back to the Duke of York strut, page 54 in your lesson. So you're going to see that you have a, starting at measure 5, 1, 4, and here's your rhythm. Notice it's got an accent on it. When you accent that thing that happens off the beat, it helps strengthen that syncopation and make it come across really well. So that first part would sound like this. And the left hand is going to keep doing that same rhythm. Bum, ba, ba, bum, ba, ba. And you might want to use your eyes to go through and see where you can find those because it's on both pages in the left hand. The right hand has one syncopated rhythm that might be a little bit tricky. I'm looking at measure 11. And Again, this is going to happen on, actually, it's a lot like the syncopation comes at the same place in the left hand. It's just they've added some other melodic notes. So the syncopation is going to come on the and of two. So I'm looking at measure 11. 
that gives it a nice jazzy sound, doesn't it? Because you start with the B natural and then you make it flat. But that's what that should sound like. Again, if you try to drop into that to make the accent happen, it will come across better. And you might want to take your, I use orange, but I think you like pink. You have a pink highlighter. You might want to just go over those little accent marks with your highlighter so they'll jump out at you and you'll remember to do that. Um, I'd also like you to look at, in your performance book, Everybody Loves Saturday Night. It too is a little bit on the jazzy side. It doesn't have any of those tie over syncopations, but what it does is it puts a rest on the beginning of beat three. The Ranger's all about that. And so that rest kind of makes things feel like you've got a syncopation. So let me just play the beginning of that for you. Normally what I do, if you and I were sitting in the same room together, we would kind of clap out like that. That's what the rhythm is. So that happens one, two, three, four, five, six times in the left hand. And at the end of the song, the left hand will say it and then the right hand will answer it. So then what I normally do is I start in measure three after we've clapped and kind of felt that rhythm. Bum, ba -da, da -da -da -da, ba -da, da 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 And then we try to play just that little part. Noticing that there is a staccato because it sounds different if you don't staccato there. You just don't get quite the, the fun liveliness of the left hand piece uh, accompaniment part if you don't put a staccato there. Um, notice that your two is going to cross over your one. You're going to probably want to try that slowly. Like that. So you might want to pause and try that and then come back to the video. The nice thing about that is the fingering happens pretty much the same way all the way through. I think it changes a little bit. Um, no, I think it's all, it, every time you do that pattern, it's the same. So once you get the fingering for that at the beginning, you're just going to apply that throughout the rest of the piece. At the, at the end, the right hand, the left hand will go, and right hand is going to go, and then you'll end with a cha cha cha. So it's a really fun song. And it's got a part that either mom or I can play along with you, so I think you'll enjoy that. So your two syncopated pieces, one from the lesson and one from the performance book.